hard surface modeling, bevels are something incredibly important, but often skipped over or ignored completely. If you aren't using bevels in your work, you are missing out big time. So today's video is gonna cover literally everything you need to know about bevels. Let's go. Now, before we begin, if you're brand new to hard surface modeling and want to learn the techniques and workflows that we use personally inside of Blender, we've got a completely free program for you to enroll in. It's called Hard Surface Modeling Jumpstart, and we've had over 54,000 students go through this program where we teach you how to install Blender, use the hard surface modeling tools, and how to create impressive looking designs, and most importantly, how to render, compose, and post-process your work to build a professional quality 3D portfolio. To enroll in this program, click the link below or head over to blenderbros.com slash jumpstart. Like I said, the program is totally free, our gift to you. Now, before you start using bevels, you first need to understand the point of them. Bevels are used for two different reasons, either to highlight the edges of your model or to define the form of your model. But before I can cover either of these, it's important to know that we have two types of bevels, chamfers and fillets. Basically, a chamfer is a single segment 45 degree bevel. In Blender, you would add this by beveling an edge and reducing the segment count to the number one. A fillet, on the other hand, is a round bevel, generally anything above one segment. So this is a chamfer and this is a fillet, but most of the time you'll just hear people refer to these as bevels with the context given based on the design. So don't stress these terms too much. Most of the time we just say bevel anyways. Now, like I said earlier, we use bevels to either highlight the edges of our models or to define the form of them. Most people will get confused about the difference between a bevel modifier and a physical bevel. So basically, the only reason you want to use a bevel modifier is to highlight the edges of your model. That's it. You don't need a bevel modifier to make these massive bevels on the model. That's what a physical bevel is for. With physical bevels, we can make different choices to our form. These are the bigger changes that affect our model in a much larger way. So if you're making drastic design choices that significantly change the structure or the form of your model, use a physical bevel. To do this, you would just press Control B and then add your bevel. Once you've defined the form of your model with a physical bevel, that is generally when you can add a bevel modifier to give the edges that nice pop. However, another really useful tool is the bevel shader. You see, sometimes if the geometry on your mesh is too dense, then the bevel modifier can actually cause these crazy overlaps. However, with a bevel shader, this is a fake one done at the rendering level. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but I prefer the bevel modifier if I can get away with it, because in my opinion, it just looks a bit more realistic. But if your mesh starts collapsing when you use it, just use a bevel shader and get back to work. So that's all you really need to know about how bevels work, but there are actually two more rules that you've probably never been taught and they are crucial. This is the difference between concave bevels and convex bevels. Depending on the surface of your object, you'll have one of these two. Concave basically means the surface curves inward like a cave, and convex means the exact opposite. It curves outward like a contact lens. Now, for a concave area of your object, rarely do you ever want to use a chamfer. It just looks weird. Instead, use a fillet. It'll look a lot more visually appealing and technically accurate. Now, that was for concave surfaces, but what about convex ones? Here, you generally have a lot more creative freedom. You can use chamfers here, or you can use fillets. Most of the time though, chamfers look a bit more natural on convex surfaces. The final thing I wanna mention is bevel size. You see, most people just randomly slap bevels of different sizes everywhere, but size matters. A bevel like this might be too big, and a bevel like this might be too small. Depending on what you're designing, you have to consider how big the bevel should actually be. That's the difference between a visually appealing design and one that isn't so appealing. Once you understand these rules and know the purpose of your bevel and the different types of bevels that you can use, your designs are going to improve tenfold. I encourage you to look at portfolios of professional designers that you respect. When you do that, you're going to see how nice and balanced their designs look just by using bevels appropriately. I hope this video is valuable. And again, if you want to learn hard surface modeling in Blender without all the crazy technical stuff and the complex work flows, check out our hard surface model and jumpstart course. You should be able to complete it in just a couple of hours and I'll link it below. Like I said, it's free. Hope this video was valuable and I'll see you in the next one.